So I didn't want to take up too much time, but I want to take a little time today to talk about uh, the incredible team. And I just want to highlight some of the most important people in this campaign. Our uh, campaign director and my chief of staff, uh, Jennifer Howard. She's done an incredible job. She ran an incredible campaign. So proud to call her a friend and our campaign director. And she led us with an incredible campaign that we are so proud of. And I feel like she represents the entire team. If I can say one person's name, she can represent lots of folks. But I also want to shout out our national director, Anne McGrath, who uh, led us to be in a position to be able to run such a successful campaign with uh, the resources that we needed to get our message out there, and most importantly, to hear from people. So big shout out to Anne McGrath. Thank you so much, my friend. And um, you probably noticed someone that stole the show uh, pretty much throughout the campaign, someone who people wanted to see more of than me because uh, she lit up the room and she had so much energy and passion while like fully pregnant. Uh, big shout outs to Kirkidin who um, made this journey so much more, not just easier, but so much more fun. She brings joy uh, to my days. She is, brings joy to everybody and uh, she brought joy to Canada and she cares deeply. She was so impacted. Uh, when she met people in Nishkandaga, the community there, young people there, uh, and really reminds me of what we're doing here. We're here to fight for people, and uh, I couldn't have done this without her, so I wanted to give a big thank you to Kirkidin. And with that, uh, I wanted to also do this in French. Uh, donc, uh, hier, j'ai voulu souligner comment... I want to underscore how I will be there for people. We will continue to fight for people. And it's important to reassure Donc, people. Uh, so today, un, un pour, uh, I want to take a moment also to thank my team. J j une I had an incredible team. Each member of my team is awesome. But if I could, I'd like to highlight two people. My campaign director, Jennifer Howard, who ran the campaign, and she represents the whole team as a director, so a big thank you so to my friend for an awesome team. And I want to thank my national director, Anne McGrath, who worked so hard each day. And just uh, gave us results with all her commitment and gave us the resources we needed to run this campaign. So, a big thank you to my national director and someone who really stole the spotlight many times. Someone who brings a uh, joie de vivre, joy. And, is my spouse, my extraordinary energy. And she did all that while pregnant. It's really incredible. And I'm so proud to have a partner like her in this adventure. So a big thank you to her. And I want to see two things. I'm. I'm happy with uh, some of the incredible new MPs that we've elected. They're going to be a force. But I'm, I'm really disappointed that there are some really incredible people that fought really hard, that poured their hearts in, and that would have made incredible members of parliament that would have really lifted the voices of so many people in their communities and would have made our, our parliament a better place. And I'm, I'm disappointed that they were not able to, to join us in Ottawa. It's, it's a loss, not just for me as a leader and not just for New Democrats as a team, but it's a loss for Canada, some of these really incredible candidates that would have really made a big difference. So I'm, uh, I want to extend, uh, just express my, my uh, yeah, I'm sad about that loss. Uh, it would have been a, it would have been really good thing for Canadians. Donc je veux aussi mentionner comment... Uh, mention that... That it's really too bad that there are MPs who lost, that, who could have helped, that who could have helped people and had a great contribution to Canada, not, not just for my team, but for all of Canada. It's really too bad. And I'm sad that they didn't get the chance to join us in Ottawa and add their voice to help people. And uh, with that,
Uh, I am uh, ready for any questions you might have. Première question, first question, Annie Bergeron Oliver, CTV News. Hi, Mr. Singh. Right now you're only up one seat, but you put more money into this campaign than ever before. You have far more name recognition than you did in 29, and you had a much more aggressive campaign. So what do you think went wrong that this time didn't really change compared to 2019? Well, you know, I, I think that this is, uh, on our part as a party, Mr. Trudeau's calling the election. I'll, I'll come to that. I don't think that was a good decision. But uh, I'm really proud that we were able to use the resources and time that we had to hear from people and, most, more importantly, to share their stories. The fact that we were able to take a national campaign and highlight the plight of a lot of people. We were able to talk to workers in Alberta who right now are at the brink. We met ICU nurses that were in tears about how horrible things are in healthcare because of cuts to healthcare and how, how important it is for us to fight for healthcare, to fight for those workers and fight for people so that they can get the care they need. We went to Nishkandiga. This is an indigenous community that hasn't had clean drinking water for 27 years. To take our national campaign there and to, to give people a voice, to give a platform to those people, I think is time and resources well spent. So I'm proud that we were able to, to run a campaign that lifted up people from coast to coast to coast. We were able to share stories and to fight for what people care about and to hear from them. And that's something I'll, I'll, never, I'll never regret. And your party spent a lot of effort on social media. It seemed like this was a key strategy this time, you know, spending more than $10 million to push your image out on TikTok. You did Twitch, Facebook, 22 million Facebook ads. But it doesn't seem like that translated into votes or into increased support. Do you think it was the wrong strategy to focus so much of your time on social media and digital media? Well, I think it's important to be able to reach out to people and using the tools that we have to connect with people where they are. And there's lots of folks that are using social media. It's a, it's a place where people gather. It's a place where people share ideas. And it's important for us to be present there. In terms of uh, the kind of the turnout, I, I think it's, to me, one of, one of the really troubling parts about this campaign or this election has been that one of the reasons why we said Mr. Trudeau should never call it, he claimed that he wanted to hear from people. Well, this is the lowest turnout, despite one of the biggest crises we've ever faced. And a lot of that is because there were, some, there were some changes that we wanted to bring to the Elections Act that would have made it easier for people to vote that both the Liberals and Conservatives held up in Parliament and didn't allow to pass. And so what we saw was, uh, was really discouraging to people. Really, really long wait times, uh, really difficult access to voting, less places to vote less access for young people to vote on campus. Uh, we're hearing really t terrible stories. Um, folks saw, saw the images. People in Toronto that are voting underneath the Gardner, it's a really busy highway in the dark, having to line up underneath a highway in the dark to vote. Uh, these are not the conditions of how things should have been. We've, we heard from Indigenous communities that, that were told if you got advanced voting, you're not going to get a polling station on the day of the election. Like these are. These are pretty bad things. Like we, we pride ourselves on being a democracy where we want to make it easy for people to vote. And what we saw was not that. And, and I blame Mr. Trudeau because he called an election without having laws in place that would have allowed us to make adjustments so that we could make sure there was easier ways to vote in a pandemic. Uh, and that was a, a huge failure on the part of Mr. Trudeau. Next question. Hello, Mr. Singh. I'd like to hear what you have to say about the disappointing results in Quebec. Only 10% of the vote, a single MP elected. It's not a lot, Mr. Singh. When you look at Mr. Leighton, who had a 50 seats for a national party, like the NDP, can you explain why you think that is, you've hit a ceiling in Quebec. Answer, first, we don't stop. I will continue to fight for Quebecers. We will still be there in Quebec. We will campaign in, campaign in Quebec. But more importantly, we will continue to win victories to help Quebecers. You can rest assured that I will go uh, right back to Montreal and Quebec in general. I will be there, and I want to say that I never thought it was an easy job. I know it takes time to gain conf people's confidence, but I will continue. I won't stop. But more importantly, 
no matter how many MPs we have in Quebec, my team will work for all of Canada, which includes the people of Quebec. So you can rest assured that we will be there. But uh, for sure, I'm disappointed. I am disappointed for the incredible MPs like, uh, that, who won't be there in Ottawa. And I think it's too bad for our team, but uh, I think so. It's also a loss for all of Canada not to have MPs than in our uh, MPs from Quebec team. We had excellent candidates, and it's a loss for our team, but also for Quebec and Canada, that they won't be in Ottawa. In English, please. Um, I want to send a message to Quebecers that uh, we'll never give up. We will always fight for you. We'll never uh, stop fighting. And I want you to know we're going to be back in Quebec as soon as possible. We're going to be back in Montreal and in other parts of Quebec. I look forward to that. And I want you to know that we will fight for you. No matter what number of, of MPs we have from Quebec, we will always fight for all of Canada. And that includes Quebec. We'll make sure that you are, are heard, your concerns are, are listened to, and we are fighting for you. And, uh, and that being said, I am though disappointed. Of course, I'm disappointed that incredible MPs that we had a, an incredible candidates that we have are not returning as MPs or not coming to Ottawa as MPs. I think that's a loss for our team, but it's also a loss for Quebec and for Canada and for the Parliament. So I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm sad to see, to not see that Ruth Ellen will be back in Ottawa. I think she, she's already shown to be an incredible voice, would have been a great voice again. Uh, our other candidates, incredible folks like Nima Machouf, Ab uh, uh Francois Choquette, uh, Brigitte Sanssouci, uh, we had lots of incredible candidates that, that I wish uh, would have been joining me in Ottawa because they would have been great voices for their communities and would have done a really good job fighting for them. And the repeated calls from Justin Trudeau about a strategic vote might have hurt you in certain writings? I think it's often a question of how people will vote. And the Liberals always have an, their argument for how people should vote. And I will always... I will always show or fight for people to show that we can build better and it's possible to do better and we'll continue to show our option and the things people are telling me that continue to be big issues, you know, uh, housing, health uh, care and the climate crisis continue and we'll continue to do our work to demonstrate that we can do better and we can build a better society in English. Uh, we, we, yeah, the Liberals are always going to have their argument. They're going to make their case at the end of the uh, election. We're always going to say that better is possible. We don't have to be stuck with, with these options. And we're going to continue to let folks know that there are, there are, we can do better, that we can, we can do things better. We can fight the climate crisis. We can tackle the housing crisis, the things that people need in Quebec uh, and, and across Canada. We can, we can do better. We can do better and people can be better off. And we'll, we'll always fight for that and we'll always let folks know that there is a better way forward. Next question. Congratulations, Mr. Singh, on your election. First, I have a question concerning Quebec. Several times, uh, Francois Legault put people on guard uh, for uh, against a central centrist government like the Liberals or you. You will be working with the uh, Liberal 
party for the next several years. How is your relationship with uh, the government of Quebec? Do you have a problem? Not at all. Uh, instead of that, uh, the people of Quebec uh, should be reassured that the NDP will go get gains for Quebecers, like we did during the pandemic. So uh, we'll meet the needs of the people of Quebec. I'm not here to uh, respond to the demands of a government. I'm here to help the people. And if I can do that will improve the quality of life for people or save lives, I'll always be there. I will always be there to help people. So the people of Quebec, as we did during the pandemic, and when people need direct financial aid, we were the ones who uh, doubled the third. And we're still in a pandemic, and the people of Quebec can be sure and confident that we'll continue to help you. I know the wage subsidy and the CERB help millions of Quebecers, and so you can be sure with a strong NDP team, we will continue to help you and to uh, respond to your needs. We heard you. You're worried about the climate crisis, housing crisis. You want us to invest in health care, and we will continue to work hard to reach, meet these goals. The question was asked again, but I'll do it again. Why is your message not getting through? Why is it not working, not just in Quebec, but across Canada? It's not that I'm disappointed of the results. I'm disappointed that people across the country won't have uh, NDP MPs because I know NDP MPs are the best to fight for people. And I think uh, a lot of uh, candidates in our team, in my opinion, could have been strong voices in Ottawa for Quebecers and also the rest of Canada. So I'm disappointed because, as I said, it's a loss for our team, but it's a loss for the people, for Canada and for Quebec and Parliament. So that's why I'm disappointed. So we'll continue. My goal is to become the next Prime Minister, so this work remains and we will continue. So we will continue to propose alternatives and we'll continue to work on the ground and we'll continue to assure people that our priority is to help you and we'll continue to show you how we can do that. And it's a good question. We'll continue to work to, to show our option to Quebecers and Canadians. Good morning. Um, what do you need to see from Justin Trudeau in terms of concrete measures, in terms of legislation to continue supporting the government? And, and where would you be willing to compromise? Well, we've laid out our, our priorities throughout the campaign, and those priorities remain. And they're priorities because they're what we've heard from people. People are wanting us to, they want to get through this pandemic. So they need help to get through it. That's top of mind. Uh, we've heard from a lot of people that are worried about uh, the healthcare system. And, and we spoke with a lot of healthcare workers who are really uh, at their end. They're, they're really burnt out. Nurses had a national day of action because, and this is a national day of action across Canada because nurses uh, as frontline workers are saying they are overworked, they are understaffed, under-resourced, their conditions at work are untenable, the shortages are just unbearable, and so uh, these workers need help. And more importantly, they need help so they can actually care for people. And so that's, that's top of mind. How do we help people out? How do we invest in our health care? How do we deal with the immediate, immediate urgent risk uh, facing our health care system? And how do we invest in frontline health care workers to make sure they've got good, good work good work conditions, good pay, and there's enough staff to deal with the needs of people. How would you assess the leverage you have going forward, though? You're still the fourth party, not the third party. We're going to go into a government that everyone knows no one wants to fall, so you don't have that threat because we don't want another election. So what would you say about what kind of leverage you have to actually get those things um, done? 
Well, we were really clear throughout the pandemic, we didn't want the government to fall because we're in a pandemic, we're in a crisis. We always knew that it was the wrong thing to do to, to force an election. But we were very successful. We were the most successful opposition party in delivering help to people because we were focused on what people needed. We heard from people that said when, we yeah. lost, when they were losing their jobs because of lockdowns, and they needed money to be able to pay their bills, to stay at home. We were the ones that fought to increase CERB. Many times the Liberals wanted to cut it. We fought to, to keep it going because we knew people needed help. And we knew that the wage subsidy had to be enough to keep people employed. So we used our position successfully to win some really big victories for people, for Canadians. They were better off because we were there. And we'll do the same thing. We're not looking for ways to, to force an election. We think that's uh, not the, that the goal. And, and Canadians sent us a clear message. They want us to continue working. They want us to get back to work. We want to get back to work to do exactly what Canadians need. And so we'll do that. We'll, we'll fight to make sure there's more help for people. We'll fight to make sure there's investments in health care. And uh, despite our number, we were the most successful opposition party in the last parliament. And this parliament looks pretty much the same. And uh, we'll continue to do the work that we did before so Canadians can rest assured we'll be there for them. Next question, Alex Bellingall, Toronto Star. Um, morning, Mr. Singh. So this campaign, you had much more money than last time. The Greens were obviously weak. Trudeau was potentially vulnerable. You, your likability numbers far exceeded the likability numbers of your rival leaders. And yet, at this point, you have one extra seat, maybe a couple more. After this campaign, with, with all of those factors, do you feel secure in your leadership with the, that result? Yes. And just on... Uh, working in the next parliament. You spent the campaign really going after Trudeau, alleging that he can't be trusted, that he's not the type of progressive politician that he says he is, after undermining his trust and arguing to Canadians um, that, that he can't be trusted. How can you work with him in the next parliament? Everything I said was true, and so I'm going to stand beside it. But I'm going to go back and say, you know, you messed up, but it doesn't mean we can't still work to get things done for Canadians. And, and I stand by that. Next question, Robin Gill, Global News. Mr. Singh, have you spoken with Justin Trudeau um, at all? And was he willing to negotiate anything, on any of your agendas or any of your issues that you have been campaigning on? Yes, we spoke. Uh, I congratulated him, but we didn't get into to details about any sort of negotiations. I let, let him know that, as always, when it comes to helping out people, we're going to be there. If it's something that's going to help people out, make people's lives better, we will not hesitate to provide support to get things done. And uh, he knows my priorities. And so we didn't get into those details, but I just made it, made it clear that, like before, if it's something around anything that we promised to deliver on, pharmacare, something we care deeply about, we will work to make that happen. Childcare, of course, we, we care deeply about. We've, we've long fought for uh, making sure women, families have access to affordable, accessible daycare and childcare. That's, it's fundamental. It's something really important. So, of course, we can be counted on for, for the things that are going to help people out will always be there. Uh, if, it's coming, if it comes to hurting people, you know, he'll probably try to work with the Conservatives, uh, but he's not going to find support from us when it comes to hurting people. Do you feel in French, please? I was going to do it in French real quick. G give, me, give me one second. I was going to do that in French, then we'll come right back to that question. Um, I spoke with Mr. Trudeau, and I congratulated him for his election as Prime Minister, and I repeat it again, what I said earlier, the fact that we will continue to support measures that will help people. So pharmacare, universal pharmacare is something we've already said. We want to realize this program, so you can count on our support for that, and an improvement to our uh, child care. We believe deeply in more investment and access. So for measures like that, we will always be there. If Mr. Trudeau wants to help people, we're ready. But if it's a measure, that will hurt people. He can go uh, find support with the Conservatives. Um, your party had great expectations in this campaign. Do you feel like it was a big disappointment? 
Well, I, we're in a great position to continue fighting for people. I'm, I'm pumped about um, the important work that we have to do, so I'm ready to get back to work. We had the same position in the last parliament, and we were able to, uh, to secure a lot of really important victories, some of the most notable victories that any opposition party has ever been able to secure for Canadians in recent memory. So we're going to continue to do that work, and uh, we're, we're confident that we'll be able to do that. I'm disappointed, uh, but not, not so much electorally in the sense that we're not able to do our work, we're going to still be able to fight hard for people. I'm just disappointed that there are a lot of really good candidates that, that we, had, we had running on our team that would have been really good voices for people. They would have really helped out people. They would have been there to fight for their communities in a really, really special way. And, and I'm, I'm disappointed that they're not going to be able to do that work in Ottawa because they would have been great. But in terms of our position, we're going to still, we're in the same position we were before and we were in a great position to fight for Canadians and we'll do that again. Next question, Olivia Stefanovic, CBC News. Good morning, Mr. Singh. I miss you, Francois. <laughs> you were on the offense for the past five weeks, yeah. visiting 51 ridings, and the NDP spent about $25 million on this campaign, and yet you're only increasing your seat count by one, maybe a few more seats. What went wrong, and what do you need to rethink? Well, we have the same parliament that uh, was chosen there before. Canadians made their choice, and, and I respect their decision. Uh, we're going to continue working hard. Folks can always count on that from us. We're always going to work hard to make sure Canadians know that uh, you can count on us. If you need help, if you need someone that's got your back, that's us. We'll keep on doing that. And uh, I look forward to, to keep on doing that work that we've already done and to keep on fighting for you. So we're here. Do you think you've hit your ceiling as leader? No. Why? I haven't. But why? Next question, Mena Karaman Wilms, The Globe and Mail. Hello, Mr. Singh. Hey there. Uh, in 2016, NDP members voted against Mulcair's continued leadership of the party after he won 44 seats in, in 2015, and that's more than you've secured now in two consecutive elections. So why are you so confident that you will maintain the support of members to lead the party a third time? We, we ran a campaign that our, that our party is and, our, and our, uh, our members are really proud of, and we fought really hard, and we showed what we're all about and we're gonna to continue to do that. So I feel really confident about that. And more importantly, I want Canadians to know they can be confident about uh, the fact that we'll be there again in, in Ottawa fighting to make sure you get more help. That's what we did in the pandemic and we'll continue to do that. Earlier this week, you said that a wealth tax was your, your number one priority in a minority government situation. So which specific measures of the proposal do you want to see implemented and would you hold back supporting the government on this issue? Well, the question really, the fundamental question that, that comes up and, and people are worried about is who's going to pay the, the price of the pandemic? And we certainly don't believe it should be you or your families. We don't believe it should be workers, the working class, middle class. We don't believe it should be small businesses. And so we, we remain resolute that it should be the ultra rich, the billionaires that pay their fair share. When it comes to um, the fights for Canadians right now, the number one thing that's on people's mind is actually the, is his health care, is getting through this pandemic is a crisis in our healthcare system, is the fact that a lot of healthcare workers are burnt out and there's a, a really, you know, nurses have been crying out for a long time that the situation is really bad. It's, it's at a disaster point. And so that's gonna be something we work on right away, getting help to get through this pandemic, getting help to our healthcare system, our healthcare workers, so that people can know that if they or their loved ones need help, that our healthcare system will be there for them. Next question, Kelly Malone, the Canadian Press. As my colleagues pointed out, this election you had more money, you pulled higher, and unlike in 2019, people knew who you were and who you are as a leader. So where do the new Democrats go from here outside of Parliament to grow ahead of the next election to get more seats if there is an election again in two years? Well, our goal, I mean, our first and foremost goal, the reason why I want to be Prime Minister isn't just because I want the title, is because we want to help people. We want to fight to make things better for people. So that's going to be our first goal right now. We are, we are going to go back to Ottawa and we're going to fight for people. We've got, a, I've a, we've got a new team. We're going to have some new MPs and we're going to get down to work to say, what can we do to make life better for Canadians? That's our goal. That's our number one goal. That will always be our number one goal. And when it comes to, to gaining the confidence of Canadians, uh, we'll do that. We're never going to give up. We know that that's not a, an easy path and I never thought it was going to be easy. But most importantly for us, and the way we gain trust for Canadians, is to do what's always been our goal, fighting for people, 
getting them the help they need. Right now, it's getting through the pandemic. It's making sure our healthcare system is there for people. And we'll do that. We're going to fight for you. And to what degree do you think that strategic voting hurt your party? I think the, the bigger problem that we're up against for, for us as a, as a party is we believe that better is possible, that we can do better. And I think there is a lot of cynicism. And I think that cynicism has been fed by, by people like Mr. Trudeau, who said a lot of great things. And when they don't do them and people end up hurting because of that, it, it increases cynicism. And it's hard to imagine that things can be better. And I think that's really the, one of the biggest challenges that we're up against is, is letting folks know or having folks really start to believe that we can do better. And, and I, I hope to do that. I hope to reinstall that faith and that, that hope that better is possible. We can make things better. We can fix the problems we're up against. If we make things a priority, they get fixed. And, and I want Canadians to know that. And so I'll keep on working on it. Mackenzie Grace, CTV News. Good, mo <coughs> yes. good morning, Mr. Singh. Yeah, good morning. Uh, polls have consistently shown that you're the most liked leader in this country and that Mr. Trudeau and Mr. O'Toole are disliked by roughly 50% of Canadians. But despite that, Mr. Trudeau is still the Prime Minister. Despite that, Mr. O'Toole won 100 seats. And despite that, you're still the leader of the fourth party. Why can't you turn your personal popularity into more seats for the NDP? Good question. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, I'm not... Like it's, it's, it's an honor. I'm thankful. I appreciate that, that people have a, a positive feeling towards me. Uh, but when I say this, I really mean it. That's good. That's all well and good. I'm really here because I want to make a difference. And in the last parliament, I said this about the campaign. I meant it. I was pretty honored and amazed at how much we, could have, we got done despite being the fourth party, despite only having 24 seats at the time. Uh, so whatever the number turns out to be, I know we'll be in a similar position to get stuff done for people. My goal will always be to form government, but it's because I think I can make a difference in people's lives. So I'm gonna use the position I have to make a difference in people's lives, to try to make things better, to help people get through this pandemic, to give people hope, to let them know that there's someone fighting for you. That's really my ultimate goal. That's the most important thing. I just know that having seen what we're able to do in a minority government with only 24 seats, I know in my heart we can make this country so much better. We could do so much more good for people if we form government. So I'm gonna keep on fighting. I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm a fighter, I'm relentless, I will never back down. And I believe that we'll make a difference in people's lives and we're gonna keep on showing that, that that is possible and that people should believe in it. There are a lot of disappointed uh, New Democrats out there this morning, including a number of MPs who you went to visit them in their ridings and, and people who thought that they were gonna be reelected, uh, including Ruth Ellen Brousseau and, and Tracy Ramsey, two particular people. You say that you're confident in your leadership of the party. So can you give us your pitch to those disappointed MPs in your caucus and to other candidates who ran about why you were not able to get more seats in last night's election? Well, those are some really good names to, to talk about when I think about people that I am, uh, I'm disappointed aren't going to be able to go back to Ottawa because Ruth Ellen Brousseau, uh, folks who know her, she was an incredible voice for Bertini, Bertie Mesconogé. She was a powerful voice for, for farmers, for people in the agriculture sector, and people were better off with her as their MP. She benefited them. And uh, it's a loss to not just our movement, but it's a loss to that community that, that she's not going to go back to Ottawa. Tracy Ramsey was a, a fierce fighter for people and still is. And uh, was a fierce fighter as an MP and continued that in her community work. And so people are, 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 are going to be worse off because she's not there for them. And, and that's a loss for me, for sure, uh, as a leader. It's a loss for our team, but it's a loss, a bigger loss for, for Essex. Uh, the people of Essex are, are worse off because she's not there. But that's the story for people across the country with our great candidates that fought so hard, that ran great campaigns. Um, they, their losses are lost to, to Canada, to, to the parliament, to people. And that's what I'm disappointed about. But in terms of campaign we ran, we ran a great campaign. We we're proud of the work we did, we're proud of uh, the people that we connected to and the stories that we shared. And we're going to go back and keep on fighting. This concludes our